Hello and welcome to Purposely Design. Today I want to talk about the power of God's grace. Ephesians 4 and 7, it, um, it talks about... Um, Matter of fact, we're going to go to Ephesians 4 and we're going to start with verse 1. It says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, bearing one, forbearing one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is above all and through all. And in you all, but unto every one of you is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So you've been measured out grace to everybody. Everybody has grace is what the word says. And not only that, I I just want to highlight six says one God and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. I hope that really like sets in because it's one God. He's the father of us all. He's above us all. He works through us all and he is in everybody. That's what this said. So that should teach you not to look down at anybody because of the fact that he just said that he is in us all and he works through us all. So anyways, um, back to the message. So May the 5th. 2022 I was laying down taking a nap yesterday basically and in my sleep I heard today I will build a new nation Romans 11 1 says I say then have God cast away his people God forbid for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin too says God have not cast away his people which he foreknew what ye not what the scripture saith of Eliza don't you know what the basically like don't you know what the scripture says of Elijah's how he maketh intercession To God against Israel saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars and I am left alone and they seek my life. For says, but what saith the answer of God unto him? What did he say? What did God say about this? It says, I have reserved to myself 7,000 men. Who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. God has the people on reserve. (laughs) He got them hidden. But he got them ready. Fire says, even so then at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of of grace look at that he said there's a remnant according to the election of grace and if by grace then is it no more of works you see that 
And if by grace, then is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. You don't have to work for grace. Grace is given to you as we read earlier on. He gave you grace. But if it, but if it be of works, then it is no more grace. If you had a word for it, it ain't grace no more. Then is it no more grace? Otherwise, work is no more work. So some got to change. Either grace is no more grace or work is no more work. So work, then turn to grace. Or grace, then turn to work. Which one is it? He said, one that won't think as he ought not think of himself. I'm talking about what he spoke to me in my sleep. Today I will build a new nation. One that won't think as he ought not think of himself. Hebrews 12 and 3 says, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God have dealt to every man the measure of faith. Look, there go faith again. <laughs> but he tells you, don't think like you somebody like you all that. Look, don't think you yourself more highly than you should be thinking, but think soberly. Humble yourself. According as God have dealt to every man the measure of faith. You got to have faith in him because you can't do nothing of yourself. Okay. And then I heard you are Shaddai. Now I don't call God normally Shaddai. I know I've heard of El Shaddai. But I found out Shaddai means the almighty God. Most people say El Shaddai, according to the Web the um, Webster Dis Dictionary, one of the definitions of the word Almighty is having absolute power over all. God has absolute power over all, over everything. He is omnipotent. I mean, that's not even one of my words, but he is above everything. There's nothing too hard for him. There's n he he didn't his words say he owns a cattle on a thousand hills like he owns everything. Everything belongs to him. In Genesis 17 and one says, and when Abram was 90 years old and nine. The Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. So he came to him as El Shaddai. Amen. Y'all, it's something about that name. That's not the usual name I use, but God was establishing himself with me on how he is moving in my life today. He is moving as El Shaddai. Amen. As the almighty God today. Deuteronomy 28 and 1 says, and it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth to and all these blessings shall come on thee 
and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. He says in three, blessed shall thou be in the city and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall, shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in and blessed shall thou be when thou comest out, goest out. Seven says, and the Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Amen. Eight says, and the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. He's giving you land. He's going to bless it. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself. As he has sworn unto thee. If thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God. And walk in his ways. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. And they shall be afraid of thee. <laughs> They're going to be scared of you. Now, my, it's so funny. My sister and I was talking about that. Uh, not too long ago, we was talking about. How when you talk about some of the gifts God has given, like uh, some people have the gift to see in spirits and different things like that. How um, I'm speaking of my sister Mika, which she was on the broadcast on another. But anyways, um, and we was talking about how when you start talking about these different gifts, how people get scared. They, some of them don't want to be around you. Some of them don't want to talk to you <laughs> because of what they're afraid about what you might see. If you're a prophet, how you might just pick up on something, you know, when it comes down to that person and what they might be up to. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's something about that. He said they're going to be afraid of you. 11 says, and the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee everything and everything. You're going to be fruitful in everything. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven, to give the rain unto thy land in his season. In his season. See, we be trying to rush and be trying to make it in a be about our season. But he said in his season and to bless all the work of thine hand, everything will be blessed. And thou shall lend unto many nations. He said unto many nations nations and thou shall not borrow oh God God is going to bless <sighs> immaculately like he's going to bless you beyond to the place where you're going to be able to give to nations and not borrow nothing and the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail and thou shalt be above only and thou shalt not be beneath if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God which I command thee this day to observe 
and to do them. God showed me that we got to learn how to speak to his people. Jeremiah chapter 31 and 2 says, Thus saith the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. Again, I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with thy tabrets, and shall go forth in the dances of them that make merry. See, God, he values his people. So he's not just putting no anybody over them. John 10 and 1 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door unto the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the voice, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and he leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice, and a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were, which he spake unto them. Seven says, then said Jesus unto them again, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. So you ain't going to be able to hear nobody else. All you can hear is the shepherd. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come. That thy might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd who's own the sheep, who owns the sheep are not seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep. And fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scatters the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling, and careth not for the for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep and the other sheep I have which are not of this fold them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd I heard the spirit of the Lord say all leaders in my TDJ's voice get ready get ready get ready get ready get ready Ezekiel 38 and 7 says be thou prepared And prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee. And be thou a guard unto them. Habakkuk 2 and 1 says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me. 
Y'all need to be watching. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. Two says, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. By his faith. He said by his faith. Amen. So there go faith again. (laughs) Grace and faith is magnified right now. Grace and faith is magnified right now. He said God is positioning you. God is positioning you. God is positioning you. I remember I heard um, last year he said he was shifting. And then I heard this year the shift was already, it's already done. God already done shifted things. Now he's positioning people. God, oh, God said, get in position. Wherever he called you to be, that's where you need to be. Psalms 46 and 10. 10 says be still and know that I am God I will be exalted among the heathen I will be exalted in the earth hold your ground says the Lord 2nd Corinthians I mean sorry 2nd Chronicles 20 and 17 says ye shall not need to fight in this battle set yourselves stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. God is coming. He's going to be with you. All you got to do is position yourself. He says, stand still and see his salvation with you. Don't be dismayed. Fear not. It's a lot of people walking in fear right now. It's a lot of people that are dismayed right now. But God said, don't be dismayed. Don't be afraid. He said, tomorrow, go out against them for the Lord will be with you. God is coming. He's going to be with you in this situation, in these battles, whatever that this is. Uh, Mm. Whatever's coming, he said, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed tomorrow. Go out against them for the Lord will be with you. It's coming. I heard it's coming. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. 6 says, In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. All you got to do is trust him. He's he's leading you. He's guiding you. He's directing you. Just listen. Let him do it. Don't go before him. Let him go before you. He's the one that makes provision. We don't. He does that. Psalms 18 and 30 says, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler. To all those that trust in him. The army. Joel 2 and 11 says. 
and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army for his camp is very great for he is strong that executeth his work for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible and who can abide it the people God has set apart is coming I started today I started here marching because there's about to be a great battle. God is positioning you. Get ready. Uh, get ready, get ready, get ready. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He said, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Hallelujah. He said, Oh, God, he's positioning you. Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. God is positioning you and he is going before you. You don't have to worry about it. He said, I'm going to fight this battle for you. The people of God, the people God has set apart is coming. I started here in marching because there's about to be a great battle. Second Samuel chapter five and 24 says, and let it be. When thou hearest the sound of a of a going in the tops of the mulberry trees, that then thou shalt be stirred thyself. For then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. Now, the New King James Version says. In 2 Samuel again 5 and 24 and it shall be when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees then you shall advance quickly for then the Lord will go out before you to strike the camp of the Philistines so when you start hearing that marching you know God is going before you Um, Matthews 24 and 15 says, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, the prophet stand in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understand. 24 and, uh, Matthews 24 and 24 says, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible they shall be shall deceive the very elect okay so um a few days ago I was telling my mom and a couple other people I said I heard the Holy Spirit tell me that there was going to be an increase of spiritual gifts, but there was also going to be an increase of false prophets. 24 and 28 says, for whosoever, I'm sorry, for wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. So God is bringing his people together y'all he's bringing his army together you know and it's going to be by grace and it's like um faith you know is going to be very important in these days we can't be fearful. We got to trust God. You know, you can't lean to your own understanding. He's showing himself almighty God in this in this season. He's showing himself mighty. So know that things are about to start taking place here soon. He said uh, what um, El Shaddai means almighty. Having absolute power over everything. 
over all. We got to know that. We got to know that he is El Shaddai. That he is almighty. That he has all power. And that he has all control over everything. There's nothing. He's not limited. We got to take the limits off of him. But God is not limited. And it's going to take his grace. His mercy. His faith. Um, he's building y'all. He's building. Um, and he's bringing it. It's like he's bringing it all together. He's bringing it. He letting it be known. He's in all. Says uh, going back to Ephesians 4, it says, There is one body. 4 and 4 says, There is one body and one spirit. So we know that we are all one body, y'all. He's calling his body to itself, okay? We're all one body and one spirit. If you're in him, you are one spirit, you are one with God. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. You're called in one hope. One Lord. One faith. One baptism. One God. And Father of all. That means everything. He's almighty. An almighty God. He's got power over everything. Who is above all and through all. And in you all. There is no limits in him. He's building a new nation. He is building. He said one that won't think as he he ought not to think of himself. So one that ain't high and boasted up. You know, there's a lot of people. I believe Corona has brought a lot of people down like who who had that type of mindset, you know, whose brain, you know, mind was blowed up. <laughs> And, and it kind of like humbled some people. For Hebrews 12 and 3. For I say through the grace given unto me. To every man that is among you. Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. But to think soberly. According as God had dealt to every man. The measure of faith. God, you are El, you are El Shaddai. You are the Almighty God. Lord, there is nothing impossible for you. There is nothing that you are unable to do. I thank you, Lord God, right now that you are bringing everything unto yourself, Lord God. That we don't have control, Lord God. That but that you are in control. I thank you, Lord, that you are. You are bringing forth provision, Lord God. You are going before us. Hallelujah. You are lining things up. You are positioning us. Oh, God, the people, Lord God, that you have, you know, for every ministry, Lord God, that that they're being drawn even now, God. To every ministry that you have going on, Lord God, that the Oh God, that you are drawing them in, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing, Lord, in the midst of us. Lord, in the midst of your people, what you're doing, what you're about to do. I just believe you're doing something great, that there's something great that you are about to do, that you have elected certain people, Lord God, for this season, for this time, for this hour, for the Oh God, for something great, 
Something great is about to happen for us. Hallelujah. Something great is about to happen for you. Oh God, help us to trust. Help us to trust you. Oh God, in this process. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. And Lord, we give you all the praise and the honor and the glory for it. In Jesus name. Thank God and amen. Y'all, I hope that this just enlightens you as to what God is doing in this hour. Um, and that it'll just help you in the process. And that you'll just listen for clear direction, understanding. Just, just lend him your ear. Let him lead you. Let him guide you in this hour because he's about to do a great work. He's calling. He's calling so many people. I heard the leaders and I heard them saying, get ready, get ready, get ready. I heard the marching. So I know God is moving. He's doing things. He's going before us. And I heard of the son. Oh, it's a great army. It's a great army. He's getting his army ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I heard the the labor the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Calling, He's calling forth the laborers because the harvest is ready. God's got His people ready. They want to hear. They're ready. They're ready. And so, in this time, in this season, it's where He's positioning you. Allow him to position you in this hour. I just thank you for tuning in again. May God bless you. May his face shine upon you. All the blessings that he has for you and that he has in store for you. I pray that you will receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Until next time. God bless you.